Welcome to the Live Well, Perform Better podcast, brought to you by Below the Line. My name is David Duggan, and I am part of a team made up of experts from the worlds of business, elite sport, adventure, and health and well-being. We are coaches, mentors, and advisors to some of the world's biggest companies and organizations, as well as smaller businesses, entrepreneurs, and people looking to make their mark on the world. Our guiding mantra at Below the Line is live well, perform better. What does that mean, you might ask? Good question. Maybe the easiest way to describe it from our perspective is finding the formula that works for you when it comes to things like looking after your physical and mental health, running your business, developing your career, leading your people, or simply being able to show up as brilliantly as possible into your own life, both for yourself and those around you. That's why each week I sit down with a member of our team or an invited guest for a conversation that focuses on the question, what do the words live well, perform better mean to you? This question is a way into exploring with people from a range of different backgrounds, industries and disciplines, what are the practices, techniques, habits or ideas that they use to help them to show up and be at their best in all areas of their lives, whether that's as CEOs, leaders or managers, or as parents, family members or friends. We keep it short and sweet so that you can extract all the good stuff and get on with the rest of your day and hopefully put some of this knowledge, experience and expertise into play for yourself. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by a very special guest, Miriam Mooney. Miriam is a coach whose path towards this form of work has come from her own extensive explorations into her own life and career, the choices she has made, and the relationship she has with herself. This exploration is what now drives her to work with and support her own clients through the same journey she has come through and continues to go on for herself. A strong feature of Miriam's work as a coach is her belief in and connection to energy as a life force that we can see and feel in others. She sees her primary role as connecting as closely as she can to the energy of her clients in the pursuit of transformational breakthroughs, thinking and insights, which, in her own words, enable people to become architects of their own future. This was a fascinating conversation with someone whose deep personal passion for and belief in what she does comes through in every word she utters. Please subscribe at www.belowtheline.ie where you can stay up to date with our podcast as well as our exclusive online events and sessions including our Press Pause coaching community and our story coaching programs. Thanks for listening and see you next week. someone's journey etc but just why do you do what you do um honestly it's my it's my passion and my purpose but it took me a long time to actually figure that out so just to give you a little bit of background on myself I I believe that we all have a coach that lives inside us and is alive and well but sometimes we don't feel called to follow that journey and with me when I look back on my life I think I had certain skills relate in relation to being a coach, but I just didn't quite understand them. Now, I had um, a corporate career in the States and in Ireland, and I worked with a lot of teams over the years, um, managed teams, was a member of a team, trained, mentored, all that good stuff. And what I started to realize a number of years ago was that, and I got really clear about it, was that self-awareness, um, positivity, energy, they're universal themes, they apply to all of us. And that that's actually what coaching is all about. It's about finding what makes you tick, finding your purpose, finding your authentic self. And once I had that realization, I then went down the formal route of becoming a coach. I am committed to it with complete and utter compassion and courage. And I'm fascinated at what happens when a space is created between a coach and a coachee. And there's trust, a foundation of trust, which then allows real open and honest conversations to start. And what I've witnessed in every single coaching session that I've done is when that honesty is allowed to open up, it's incredible what what we can find inside. And the true journey of self-discovery actually begins. Fantastic. Wow. Um, something you mentioned there that I was really struck by, we all have an inner coach. Um, could you just talk to me about that? Because I, I know from my own experience, yes, I have an inner coach, but I also have an inner critic. So critic. how does that kind yeah. of play out for you or what's your take on that? 
Sure. So I suppose I'm really a visual person. So to me, the, the inner coach would be like a sat nav that's inside us and it guides us, call it gut, gut instinct, call it intuition, call it a sixth sense. And I believe that we all have it and it's, it never lies. And it tells us very quickly where to go and what to do in our life. It's like a prompt. It's like this system that we don't see, but it's there inside of us. And it is our best guide, our, our, our most uh, truthful and honest version of ourselves and what we should do. Now, the problem is, for me, I didn't always trust that inner voice or knowing, and I allowed the gremlins the sabotage to come in and you know things like uh doubt or 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 guilt or not feeling good enough and they became then self-limiting beliefs and as we all know what we believe we become so if you fill yourself with those self-limiting beliefs and you actually trust them they will become true <laughs> you give them a voice they'll start to speak to you and they'll overshadow your inner coach your wise woman or man that lives inside and i genuinely do believe that we all we all have one yeah. Yeah. And so your role as a coach when you're working with people, it's I know you're always uh, you, I suppose it's to provide a bit of a mirror back to them, but it's about igniting that inner coach in them, is it? It is. It's about igniting that actual purpose inside them. It's about helping them to um, find out what really makes them tick and to get very clear about it so that they can, you know, um, tune into it very quickly. Like a lot of the time, I think as humans, we make things complicated when really they can be very, very simple. Life doesn't have to be as complicated as we make it. But the thing is, it's like we have two different lives. We've got our external life and we've got our inner life. And the inner life is where all the power is. The inner life is where all the, um, the, the inner life is where the gold can be found. It's just to go on a journey of self-discovery, to have the time, to take the time, to allow yourself to be in a space where you do open up and question things. And the role of a coach, the role, how I visualize myself, again, very visual. I see myself as standing beside the coachee, a huge big Olympic torch that I'm holding in between the two of us. And we're basically going to light that up around the circle of their life and see the different areas, the different parts of them, the mental, the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, how are they showing up? Where are the areas that they're happy and content and where are the areas that they're stuck? And it's almost nearly like we navigate, we help people excavate their stuckness. Um, it's a little bit about how I see my role and the role of all coaches, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think as well, listening to you, you know, this idea of, you know, helping others find their inner coach, you've referred to listening to your own coach and, and trying to, you know, that took a while. So clearly you've come through a process of doing that and that gives you some authority um, and so a, a lot of authenticity when it comes to working with other people. But just tell me about, you know, a little bit around the journey of, of starting to listen to your own inner coach. What was that like and how long did that take? Oh, it took probably a few lifetimes, David, but in this one, <laughs> in this one, um, I suppose from a very young age, I was quite headstrong. And um, there, the, the word that was used or the words that I sort of associated with that was that I was stubborn and I saw it as a negative. So there was this conflict inside of me going way back around what I felt and thought and what I told myself I felt and thought. And to be truthful with you, I struggled with that gremlin for years and years and years because it was the one that I fed. It was the wolf that I fed. I fed the negative self-limiting beliefs. I felt this, this sort of um, dialogue of, well, you know, are you sure you can do that? Like, are, are, are you sure that you deserve that? Are you sure? Like, what? Who, who very dare you? Who do you think you are to assume that you could you know, be a coach and help people. Long before I knew maybe what a coach was, I sort of had this playing small and hiding the light and not fully understanding that actually, you know, we all have this ability. We all have this inner knowing, inner sense, inner guide, inner coach, and it's there and it's alive and well. And when we tune in and it, it talks to us all the time, it talks to us in, in for me, it's, it's like in thoughts and words. When I'm in a coaching session with somebody, 
particularly now during the, the time of Zoom, sentences and phrases that they say to me literally jump out off the screen and a word lands on my lap. And then that's the prompt for me to ask them a question. Now, before I would have, I would have doubted that. I would have thought, dismiss the prompt, continue listening with my ears. But actually what I found is as a coach, we can listen with all parts of ourselves. We can listen to energy. We can listen to vibe, movement, eye contact, pauses, words. And it actually is very, what's the word? Exciting to see what as humans we all have inside, every single one of us, this well of clarity and wisdom. And for me, it was just getting super clear with the help of lots of teachers and mentors and coaches along the way. And, and having the courage to start to lean in to those prompts, to those thoughts, to those words, and to actually commit to digging a little bit deep and not just giving in to that old gremlin telling me that I, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, good enough. Our strap line in, in Below the Line is this, is live well, perform better. But I'm just wondering, what, does, what do those words mean to you? Because they are, as we all know, open to interpretation. And that's the beauty of it. But I'd love to hear your, your perspective on that. Sure. So for me, live well means that we are aware of the fact that as humans, we're made up of many parts. We have our, our, our mental energy, physical, social, emotional, spiritual you know, we're made up of all these different aspects of energy of ourselves. And when we start to tune in and become interested and aware and mindful of our energy, then all of a sudden, by default, we start to actually live better. And by living better, I mean having peace, having uh, direction, having um, compassion, having gratitude. Gratitude is a huge one you know, um, and feeding our mind with gratitude because our mind, we can actually control our mind. And I suppose this thing around really becoming um, interested in our own journey. And as we start to do that, when we show up with commitment, when we show up with courage and compassion, then we start to live, you know, then we start to be in balance. Then we start to perform better in every sense of the word. And in terms of, um, you know, the people that you're working with now, you know, what do you think are the main challenges that you come across um, either most commonly or, or right now with the, with the people you're working with? It would be um, the mental health side of things. And what I mean by that would be self-limiting beliefs, you know, doubt, uh, people that, 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 I, that I'm working with that would be all around really tuning into and helping them find their inner voice and their purpose. And it can seem so daunting. It can seem like something that we can't change, but actually very small daily practices and changes can help us tune into ourselves and tune into the way that we show up and tune into, tune into being grateful in our lives. I mean, we have, we spend more time and focus on our dental health than we do on our mental health. And I was just thinking to myself yesterday, you know, if, if every morning and every evening when we brush our teeth, if we use those one and a half or two minutes to just count blessings or be grateful, or get excited or follow something that jumps into your head about what you should do that day, that in that moment of self-care for the teeth, we'd actually be self-care for the soul, self-care for the mind. And, and uh, that's what I'm finding is that people are struggling with this whole idea of feeling stuck, feeling held back, not necessarily, know, not necessarily knowing what direction they can go in. And I suppose my my absolute joy as a coach is standing beside them and walking that path and seeing what uncovers. What happens um, when you uh, witness or see people make those breakthroughs? You know, what do you notice about people? Oh. <laughs> a complete and utter energy shift. I mean, it's, it's like all of a sudden there is a there, the, the breakthrough for me. You see it in their face. It's like all of a sudden there's a light. All of a sudden there's that it's that light bulb moment, you know, it's, it's something that had seemed complicated or stuck or a burden all of a sudden has got a big light shining on it. And really, it's not that hard. And it's a relief. It's a relief and a sense then of, wow, didn't think of that before, didn't realize that before. And a real feeling also of positivity and empowerment. And it's just phenomenal. I will never, ever, ever get tired 
of having the honor of witnessing that um, in others. And, and also when I have my own little tiny breakthroughs as well, it's just this, you want to do a happy dance, you know, it's, it's incredible. And I think as well, um, in my own experience, and I'm sure you can relate to this too, obviously we've been all, we've all been on Zoom for the last two years, but it is still possible to see that shift in energy or shift in perception or whatever it might be, even via, you know, the, the, a digital medium, isn't it? 100%, you can feel it. Not only can you see it, you can actually feel it. And as I said, there's many, many times when I will see something landing with a person on the screen that's talking to me where they get that moment it's like as if the energy in them immediate i can feel it and i can see it and it's like powerful and and it's it's um yes zoom has been a very interesting a very interesting tool and and actually a great benefit to all of us i believe in terms of you and any practices or habits or behaviors that you do on a daily basis you know what what do some of those things look like that help you with the with the living well performing better peace it's, it's really very, very simple for me. Um, I think the first thing is waking up in the morning, probably before I get out of bed, just thinking a little bit about the day. Um, I know the value of journaling. I can't say that I journal daily, but I, I definitely do focus on words and thoughts in the morning. And it's sort of like a little practice. It's not quite a meditation where I sit cross-legged on the floor. It's more, it's more really like a, a mindful thing that I'm thinking of as I'm beginning to enter my day you know, getting up, getting ready, making the coffee. In all those moments, I'm thinking about what's ahead and I'm thinking about the good stuff that might have happened yesterday or the good stuff that's going to happen today and just tuning into that. We're human. We don't wake up a perfect version every day of the week. But I think when, you know, I believe from my own path and and experiences that I've had, that gratitude is the elixir for the soul. And it instantly changes how you feel in a given moment. That's a big one for me. Another one that's really important, simple and all as it may sound, is drinking lots of water, <laughs> being hydrated. Another one would be trying to get some sort of fresh air in every day, whether it's 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be a huge, big walk, but just to get out, get a little bit of, of uh, space, you know, away from the desk, away from the home, away from the office and clear the head. Really, really simple. You know, I'd like to say one of the things I'm working on at the moment is my sleep routines. I, uh, I definitely need to do uh, a bit of coaching to myself on my sleep habits and, and rituals, but, you know, leave the phone outside the bedroom, all that good stuff. So I'm a work in progress when it comes to that. But um, tiny, simple steps. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it sounds to me like there's, there's mental calibration that happens in the morning hydration during the day and, and a bit of movement and that's that's your that's the formula that works for you I think I've also become very aware over the years of of you know what what we absorb as people you know not just in um the company we keep but what we read what we listen to the things we do you know it's it's a space that you're in I mean even at this time of the year it's it's, it's always interesting to me how a good declutter of one's own home can actually open up space, you know, it can make you feel more comfortable. I'm very, very interested in, in all of those little tiny things that make a massive difference. Um, and I try to remember them. I don't always, but I try to remember them when I can. And I know they make a difference. You mentioned kind of going on instinct in your coaching, but being very attuned to energy. Um, could you just explain to me just about where energy kind of plays its role for you in whether that's life or just in your coaching? Yes, it's probably in life. And I, I can't give you a scientific answer to, to it, okay? But what I can tell you is that how I, how I feel, but what I experience is that every single moment of the day, there, there's energy. It's, it's, it's um, we can't quantify it. You know, we, we, we spend a lot of time in life getting to learn skills about time management. But... There's not a whole lot of talk around energy management and energy is something that it's invisible, but it's the glue that keeps us all together. And every single aspect of our lives, it's energy. We're made up of energy. So for me, there's a, an almost a, um, a feeling or a sense of that you can, that, that when you pause and it's not a thinking thing, it's actually a feeling thing. When you pause and just get centered, take a couple of deep breaths, 
you can instantly tune into your own energy and therefore other people's. But it's not a, I've struggled, I struggle to talk about it because in my own head, I haven't formulated a technique or a step-by-step -step on it. It's, but the only thing I can say, and it sounds such a rookie way of saying it, is that it is, when we just pause and tune in, we're in it. We're all, always in it. But when we pause and tune in, it can guide us. I, I remember hearing somebody once talking about, I'm sure you've come across this idea too, but the idea of energy is, um, uh, en sorry, or emotions, sorry. The idea is emotion, so energy in motion. Um, so it's, you're right, it's this, uh, it's this uh, undetectable kind of life force or something within us but it's it's sparking off other people it's coming out of us and we 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 give it out um and i think you're right you know sometimes we're very consciously giving it out and then i think with a lot of coaching work often you're you're trying to make people more conscious of the energy that they themselves are probably unconsciously uh, living in or um that's in their mind or that they're just giving out to other people i think it's 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 fascinating way to to think about the impact that people have on, on, on themselves and the world around them and other people around them. Yes. And we're not always aware. We don't always actually realize that how we show up, how we present, how we face our day, our life. We're, we're, we're not really at all in tune of our own energy. And when we begin to get a little bit interested in that and begin to explore it and discuss it, and you couldn't, my God, how you just explained that there was phenomenal but it is this thing that it's 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 um a life force it's a life force it's like the you know star wars it's the, it's the good force it's the it's the thing that that just is around all of us we all have it and it's it's realizing that accepting that and not always looking for the scientific answers to it but more what you feel you know how things make you feel how it's a classic of you know we were all off and gone out and, and spent an evening with company and come back and felt so motivated and excited and enthused. And likewise, you could go out and spend a couple of hours with, you know, a group or an individual and come back and feel like you've been zapped of all of your life force, you know, energy vampires. It's, it, it, our energy talks to us all the time. It guides us all the time. What's your advice for anyone who's listening to this and thinking, um, I like this idea of live well, perform better, but where do I start? Well, in terms of, um, I would say the very first thing is committing. Committing to yourself that in no matter what, how small of a way, you're going to start taking steps towards, uh, you know, the path to your future, that you're no longer going to be stuck or a victim of the past or the stories that you tell yourself, but you're going to be an architect of your future. And there's nothing like getting support. There's nothing like being able to share human connection you know, a really good coach standing beside you and talking to you and holding that space. Once there's trust, trust is the critical component. So don't just pick any coach, talk to a few, see what your gut tells you, see how you feel after you've spoken to that coach. And only if you're going down that road, connect with somebody and work with somebody that you can feel safe, not judged, that you can open up and be honest and that you'll be held with regard and respect and watch out for what will follow because it's going to be a whole new path in your life. Be an architect of your future. I love it. Be an architect of your future. Yes. Miriam, um, you're a fountain of knowledge and as I've known you over the last little while, I just love how you bring um, such honesty, you know, in terms of your own story and your journey to to what you're doing. So thanks very much for um, giving me some time and just sharing some of those little gold nuggets. I really appreciate it. Most welcome. It's an absolute honour. Thanks, David.